Hello everyone, I'm Frazier 208 back again to give you another video, and this time I'm going to be talking about episode 2 of Tokun Danburu Hanamaru, uh, entitled February. So, uh, in the beginning of the, uh, like, I want to kind of divide it into two, uh, the episodes, like the first 12 minutes and then the last 12 minutes, because that's what this kind of show is starting to feel like. So in the first 12 minutes, we get introduced to two more swords, um... Of which one is like this really nice and peaceful and well peaceful uh like just clean looking individual it's very weird very much so just like he lo he looks friendly to talk to is what I'm trying to say and then the other guy is just pure I'm gonna train and I'm gonna fight and the fighting is cool and stuff like that and that's the two that we get introduced to we do not get to see who the master is that created these swords and who gives the the, the top guy instructions as such because um they were going to plan to go into his room, uh, but it never does happen and you never get to see who the master is. So anyways, back to the new two swords when they get introduced. I think one of them is named Sai uh, for something and the, the other sword uh, notices that on like a painting and is like, oh, that's weird. But it never gets explained ever again. So we just see the two swords. I'm assuming that they'll play a uh, bigger part later on in the series. But as of now, we just get introduced to them and they get to tour around the, uh, the, the place, the... You know where they work, uh, the horses, the uh, the uh, crops, the the house itself, uh, meeting other people, the open air bath that one of them was so happy about, and yeah, it was just them touring the place, uh, so we can all the audience ourselves get introduced to uh, what the actual place is. Although to be fair, uh, the inside of the house we haven't really toured that much of, so there is stuff to explore in that regard there. Uh, but other than that, though, uh, two more. <laughs> More husbandos in the who is your favorite husbando of this show. Uh, I'll probably be doing a video about that and just analyzing who truly is ranked number one in that show. Again, I picked one, but it could easily sway, I suppose. Oh, in case you didn't watch my f uh, my first uh, video on episode one, uh, click right over there. Uh, it'll take you to it in case you were wondering if I did an episode one or not. Also, there'll be a playlist, and every time this gets out, I will be making more videos about these. So anyways, that's just the first half of this episode where it's just like two new swords. They get introduced to around characters, and that's pretty much it. The second half is a couple of the older swords uh, have to go and stop the, um, the historical retrograde army or whatever uh, because they went back to... Nobunagan's time, and in case nobody knows uh, who is watching this, who Nobunagan is, uh, let's just say he made he he made Japanese history by being a very famous swordsman. Uh, there's a bunch of animes about him, a bunch of mangas about him, a bunch of video games actually. Nobunagan is a popular video game series as well, uh, so you could just probably just Google him and see what he's done and his history and stuff. But in the terms of the show, uh, Nobunagan. Uh, had a couple swords, and these swords are the people uh, who were in the in the sh in these shows. Uh, in sorry, in the show, and they were talking about how he didn't really treat them well, how they were just maybe like prized possessions, how they won't really like as swords. They weren't used as swords. It was just kind of like I. One of the swords was describing like he used me as like uh, to to brag about people. It's like hey, I got this sword in a battle, and like he would polish me, but he would never really use me or treat me that well. Uh, one of them was at the bosom of Nogunagan, uh, and he wasn't treated that well either. So they, they had really bad things to say about their master. There wasn't any really good memories about Nobunagan, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and when they have to go stop the historical retrograde, uh, retrograde army, uh, because they're going to screw around with one of these decisive battles where it's uh, depicted that... Well, not depicted. It's it's basically when Nobunagan uh, died in that battle he died in his sleep when two armies were clashing each other well there was an uh an invasion if you will one army went in and uh secretly attacked them at night and nobunagan died in his sleep is what it says in history anyways uh and of course you know these swords who used to be uh wielded by nobunagan or who used to be a part who used to be with nobunagan they have really bad memories of him and so when they go there the master who created these swords well, who brought them to life basically said, take some time, you know, when you're done defeating the army, take some time and look around you because you might not get this chance to do it again. And it'll probably bring some closure to you. Uh, that is what they were hoping for. 
that is what the master was hoping for with these swords anyways and that's what uh the other sword notices as well i really should start learning these guys' name i'll do that in by episode three i promise guys but there's there's just a lot there's like 22 other swords there okay so there's a lot of a lot of people is what i'm trying to say in this 12 episode show okay so please forgive me i will learn the names in the meantime but yeah uh he notices what the master was trying to say or trying to do in that matter and then at the end when they having this little festival to introduce for the uh, a party for the new two swords uh the other sword uh basically asks the other guys who used to be part of nobunagan's like i suppose weaponry and he's like Hey, you know, maybe Nobunagan actually escaped and he was, uh, he found a, uh, a thing for immortality and it's still out there living. And then the swords fi find that kind of funny and it's like, you know what, I don't doubt that at all. And he's like, well, if you could meet Nobunagan, what would you ask him? And they don't really answer that. Uh, and he's like, well, I bet, you know, if I had the chance to meet my master, I would probably ask him a couple questions myself. So what I mean by, okay, so in episode one, uh, in case you didn't see the video, uh, which I'm hoping that you did, but if you didn't I, I basically said that they try to play w with this big cast of characters and souls and history they're going to try to play the emotional card or like trying to get these uh, characters with backstories and give them all uh actual in-depth character development and stories and, and whatnot uh, and that's what actually happened in this episode where uh although the first half was kind of stupid i'm not gonna lie it's like eh, whatever, the second half was actually the, the whole, you know, meat and potatoes of the show, if you will, where it's like, all right, well, these characters used to be part of, like, this great, great uh, Japanese uh, legend or hero, uh, swordsman, and, you know, this is their, uh, uh, their memories with Nobunaga and, and how they feel about him and, and stuff like that, so um, that's what I mean by it, it's like, they're gonna try to play, like, the emotional card, uh, or hopefully... There's no way they're gonna. There is no way that they are going to give backstories for twenty two other swords. This is not okay. First of all, there's no way unless they group the swords like what they did here, where it's like three other swords grouped together. They used to be part of Nobunaga's uh, weaponry and whatnot. Uh, so that's the only thing that I could see them doing is because most of the swords, their interaction is that they actually know each other from history or they were from the same era of Japan. So that's why when Sai, the new sword, comes in, he actually starts talking to a bunch of other swords because he he is uh from the same era of time uh, that those other swords were so it makes sense that he could like relate to them uh so i could see that happening in this series that uh they're just gonna group together a bunch of people and they're gonna have to go to a certain era and they're gonna have to like you know mem like the whole emotional side to the show really uh so yeah that's all i have to say about this show uh if you want to know uh, what other shows I'll be watching? There is a uh, link down below. It's it's uh, it's to subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you want to check out my second channel, where I post other videos that are not just about the new seasonal shows and, and whatnot, you can also check that out. Uh, so yeah. Anyways, yeah, we've gotten to the end of the video. So if you want to click here to check out the last video that I posted, and if you want to click here for a surprise video that will take you to a video that you probably haven't watched on my channel or maybe even my second channel. Uh, subscribe down below, leave a comment, uh, what you thought about this episode, as well as a like if you liked what I was talking about, or maybe if you didn't like what I was talking about, you can dislike it as well, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, comment down below what you thought about this episode, and what you predict where this show is gonna go. I feel like it's a formulated first half characters, introductions, and just like bonding, and then second half, the actual fighting here and there. Uh, but yeah, that's that's all I have to say about this show. Uh, I have been your host, Frasier2198, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.